you this morning. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you've tuned in. We are, as I've already stated, kicking off our Connect Group campaign entitled Created to Dream. Created to Dream. You know, I've come to the conclusion that it's, that it's time for us to dream again. It's time for each of us to begin to dream again, regardless of our age. I mean, you know, there have been a lot of things happen in our nation that has really kind of messed things up and gotten everybody worried and fretting, but I say it's time to dream again. In fact, uh, Joel chapter 2, now don't anyone raise your hand. I asked people this, and I was surprised how many admitted to this, but he even says that old men shall dream dreams. I, I want to challenge all of our folks that we say are in your wisdom years. I didn't say old. I said in your wisdom years, there, there's probably some things, if you, if you would open yourself up to it, God would give you a new dream for whatever time you have left on this earth. And let me just say, it's time for Church on the Rock to begin to dream again. And I'm doing that. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to be talking to our Tuesday morning prayer group about that, what, what, what we're going to be doing next. And, uh, but if you want to know what our dream is, we've, we've got, I put a copy of it in the foyer. You can grab one of those and look at it. But, but there's even more to that. Now, the title of today's message is What Faith Can Do For You. I'm going to introduce this series by talking about what faith can do for you. Now, all that God wants to do in your life, He does on the basis of faith. In fact, somebody said, faith is to the Christian life what a mainspring is to a watch. In other words, it is indispensable. Did you know that everybody has faith? You may say, well, I, I don't have a lot of faith. Yeah, you probably have a lot more faith than you realize because everybody has faith. Did you know that even an atheist has faith? Yeah, atheists have faith. The only difference is, number one, what you put it in, put it in and number two, the amount that you have. How many of you would say, I I'd like to have more faith in my life. Let, let, let me see your hands. How many of you would like to have more faith in your life? I know for me, I would. Um, let's take a look at Romans chapter 12, or chapter 10, verse 17. And we're going to talk about how do you get more faith. Here, here it is. The Bible says that consequently faith comes from hearing the message and the message is heard through the word of Christ. If you want faith, it, it, I mean, the starting place, you got to hear the message of the Bible. You got to hear the message of Christ and, and, and get, in the, get in the Bible and read it or listen to it. Now, the Bible says that we get faith through listening to the word of God. Now, as we look at some scriptures that illustrate this and explain how I love this, positive faith can make a difference in your life. Here's what's going to happen. Your faith will grow, and it'll do so. I can almost guarantee you that without a doubt, it will grow. Now, before we get into this, I want us to look at some benefits of faith first. What, what does faith do? The Bible uses the word faith or the word believing 485 times in the New Testament. What does faith do to me? Well, let's take a quick look at some things that faith does for us. Number one, faith determines what God can do in my life. In my, in my life. Now, according to your faith, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 9, verse 29, it will be done unto you. So, folks, listen, all of us have to have faith. Faith determines what God can do in my life. And here, here's the interesting thing about it. You and I get to choose. You get to choose how many blessings you have in your life. And you get to choose how many answered prayers you have. You and I get to choose how much I can work or that God can work in your life. And what is the key to it all? Faith is the key to it all. Now, it's according to your faith, there are, and there are 7,000 promises in the Bible and faith is the key that unlocks those promises. So in other words, faith determines what God can do in my life. How many of you hear that today? You've got to have faith. Number two, faith can solve impossible problems. Now you've heard this verse a million times. It, it's, 
goes this way. It says, if you have faith as small as the mustard seed, nothing will be impossible to you. Now, here's what I know today in my heart. Some of you are facing some impossible situations right now, and you need this verse. I mean, you know, it doesn't take a lot of faith to believe God. Listen to this. You put a little faith in a big God, and you get big results. I mean, you realize that. We've got to put our faith in God today. God is a big God. God's, God's not shaking. He's not been knocked off his throne with everything that is going on in our world today. But, but he's a big God, and, and if you trust him, you get big results. Number three, it is the key to answered prayer. The Bible says if you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. You know, I used to uh, pray like this. It goes something like this. Dear Lord, if you're not too busy and you can afford it, uh, here's my request. The Bible says you believe that you receive it and then you will have it. In other words, you, you've got to do some believing in advance. If you have an attitude, well, I'll believe it when I see it, you will never ever see the things that God wants you to enjoy. Why? Because it is the key to answered prayer. Number four, it is the secret to achievement. The Bible says everything is possible for him who believes. Everything. I am believing God for some big things, folks. I am believing God for some big things. Why is this true? Because faith turns dreams into reality. It gives you the confidence to move ahead. Now think about this. Did you know that goal setting is a statement of faith? Let me say that again. Goal setting is a statement of faith. Werner von Braun, the man who founded the space age, who initiated the United States rocket system, he said this, there has never been a single great achievement in history without faith. Think about that. It's the secret to achievement. The Bible says everything is possible for him who believes. If I want anything to happen today, is I want your faith to be stirred up. I want you to start dreaming again and believing God that anything is possible. Number five, faith is the basis for miracles. Now Jesus said this, he said anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing and even greater things. Jesus said that. Jesus said, you'll do those things. Now, that's got to be one of the most amazing verses to me in all the Bible. Let me ask you a question. How many of you are doing greater things than Jesus? But he said, if we believe in him, that will happen. Now, I'm, I'm not even doing half of the great things as Jesus. Maybe, I don't even know if I'm doing an eighth of what Jesus did. Yet he, yet he says it. Why? Well, here's the reason. When Christians pray... Miracles can happen all over the world. Why? As when Jesus Christ was here, they were confined to where he was. In other words, miracles can be done in many places. But you must believe in advance. Maybe you say, well, does God do miracles today? Oh, the answer is, of course he does. Yes, he does. He does it through people. And he does it through prayer today. And it is the basis for miracles. Now, the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus did miracles when he was here on the earth 2,000 years ago. But how many of you know Jesus is still, in one sense, still here on the earth? He's here in the person of the Holy Spirit. And through the Holy Spirit, he can be everywhere. So, yes, he still does miracles. Number six, the Bible teaches, uh-oh, that lack of faith is a sin. You know, one of the, I guess one of the most disturbing verses to me in all the Bible, it says, when Jesus comes back, will he find faith in the earth? And really, if you study it a little deeper, it says, when, when he comes back, will he find the faith? Indicating that there's going to be a lot of tests in the world. There are, there's going to be trials that are going to cause us to doubt a lot of things. But one thing about it, the Bible teaches that lack of faith is a sin. Everybody go, ouch. Romans 14 and 23 says everything that does not come from faith is sin. Now, 
To me, that's pretty clear. I mean, it's pretty clear. If we're not walking in faith and believing God for things and believing God for a dream, that, 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 sorry, that enters into the category of sin. Now, I don't know how much you blew it this week, but I, I did. I, I'm breathing, so thank God I'm still breathing, but I, I blew it a little bit. I don't know. Maybe you didn't. I hope you didn't. The Bible says that everything that does not come from faith uh, is sin. God expects us to depend upon Him. He does. Young or old, all of us, whatever phase of life we're in, He expects us to depend upon Him. Number seven, it is the way to please God. Faith is the way to please God. Hebrews 11 and 6, listen to this verse. It says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. If I don't have faith in God, if I don't believe what the Word of God says, if I don't believe the promises of God, listen, it's impossible for me to please God. Now, you don't have to raise your hand, but how many of you parents, let me, let me go ahead and ask this, how many of you are parents? I see some parents, I see some kids, that's wonderful. A lot of you are parents. How many of you are pleased when your children put their trust in you? Let, let me see your hand. Most of us who are parents are very pleased when our children listen to what we're saying and they put our, uh, their trust in us. But, uh, most of the time, kids, we know what we're talking about. Not always. We, we make mistakes. But most of the time we know. Did you know that God is pleased when his children put their trust in him? Faith is the way to please God. Say amen and I'll move on. Number eight, it produces success in living. I love this verse too. 1 John chapter 5 verse 4 says, The victory that overcomes the world is our faith. You want victory in life? You, you want to be an overcomer? You've got to have some faith. It's our faith. Faith gives you confidence. It neutralizes fear. You know, fear is a big thing today. It gives you the ability to press on. Now, I want you to just think with me for a moment, but can you imagine Moses and Aaron standing before the Red Sea and, it's, and they're getting ready to part and Moses turns to Aaron and says, All right, Aaron, you go first. You know, God's told Moses to lead the way. Uh, or how about this one? Ladies first. All the women, you get to go first. You know, we've never gone this way before. We're fixing to cross over the River Jordan. It's at full, full flow, and you, you ladies get to go first. That sounds like men full of faith, doesn't it? <laughs> In other words, faith gives you the ability to have confidence to move ahead, which produces the success in your life. Again, how many of you are maybe thinking to yourself, you don't have to respond this time, I'd like to have my faith increased. I, I know I would. Some days I think, David, do you trust God like you should? And, and I, can I just be honest? Sometimes I don't, but I'm, I'm getting better. I'm growing in it. And I'm learning more and more, and maybe you feel like me. So, so if we need more faith, and faith is the indispensable element in the Christian life, what is it? What is it? We know where to live by faith. The Bible says that, and yet most Christians don't even have a working definition of what faith is. Most Christians couldn't give you a practical definition if they wanted to. I'm not trying to belittle anybody. I'm just, I'm just telling you it's, it's kind of the way it is. Maybe they say, well, faith is trusting God. True. That's true. But it's a lot broader than that. So if that's true, how, how, how do you trust God? How, how does it apply to my life? What about to my marriage? How do we apply faith to our marriage? All of us have to apply faith to our marriages if we're married. How about to our job? It takes faith to work in this world today. And all those kinds of things. So faith is such an important concept. You cannot describe it simply with one word or one definition. Why? Because faith is like a diamond. It has many different facets to it. And many different shapes and sides. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to look at eight things or eight facets of what faith is. What is faith? Here it is. Number one, faith is stretching my imagination. The Bible says in Ephesians 3.20, 
listen to this, God is able to do more than you think or imagine. You think of the greatest thing that you can imagine that, that could happen in your life, and God says, I can outdo that. God says, you ain't seen nothing yet. What can you imagine? The greatest thing that you can imagine in your life, God says, I can outdo that. Now let's turn to Genesis 15. I want to show you an example of this first principle that faith starts by stretching the imagination. Now faith always begins with an idea, a concept, maybe a vision or a dream or a, a mental image or a picture. It, it always starts with an idea. Now if you know the story in Genesis 15, God came to Abraham one day and he said, Abraham, I'm going to make you the father of a great nation. He said that in Genesis chapter 15. He said, and you're going to have a lot of children. And, and then that, that was kind of hard for Abraham to conceive and believe because he was in his 90s. He's, he's right at 100 years old. He didn't even have a kid yet. And God says, you're going to be the father of a great nation. And Abraham says, rise. So God says, here's what I'm going to have to do. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to give you a picture. So in Genesis 15 and 1, after all this, it says, The word of the Lord came to Abraham in a dream. I still believe God can speak to us through dreams. Now, not every dream I have is of, uh, of God. I've had some pizza dreams before. Any, anybody ever had any of those? But it says, He came to him in a dream or in a vision. Then verse 4, it says, Then the word of the Lord came to him and said, This, this man, he was talking about Eleazar. Uh, Abraham's contemplating all this. He's not going to be your heir, but a son is going to come from your own body who will be your heir in his 90s. Some, listen, some of us who are a little older in years getting on him, you, 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 listen, you need to open up again. N not for natural childbirth, though. <clears throat> we'll, we'll pass on that, right? That's for the young folks. <clears throat> Amen. He said, Eleazar, he's not going to be, it's, it's going to be a son coming from your own body who will be your heir. And he took him outside and he said, here's what I want you to do. I want you to look up at the heavens. And I want you to count the stars. He said, indeed, if you can count them. By the way, have you, have you done that lately? I encourage you to go out. Uh, just go clear your head. And on a clear night, find somewhere out in the country and go out and begin to look at the stars. First of all, you'll see how magnificent God is. But he's giving Abraham an image. He, he said, I want you to look up at the heavens. And I want you to count the stars if you can count them. By the way, you can't do it on a, on a good clear night. And then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. Now, folks, we're talking about faith here. It says, Abraham believed the Lord and he credit it to him as righteousness now god says abraham I'm, go I'm, I'm going to stretch your imagination and he took him outside and he said look up at the stars and abraham looked up at all the stars and and it, the bible says that he tried to count them and god says that's how many descendants you're going to have i mean you know what i'm trying to do i'm trying to stir you up again I tell you, we've been through a lot of things in this country. It's time for the church and us individuals start dreaming again and get, get, get some faith again. How many of you know that faith always begins with a picture, a, a mental image, a dream, a vision, or an idea? And, and so God said, here's something you can visualize. And every night when Abraham walked outside, he looked up and he said, that, that's going to be my family. I'm going to have a large family. In fact, the entire Jewish nation came out of this man called Abraham. So God starts by stretching our imagination. What can you conceive? Whatever you can conceive and believe, you can achieve. Amen. It's true. Faith starts with stretching the imagination. 
Faith is visualizing the future in the present. See, you've got, you got to start doing it right now. I made up my mind, and I believe God put it in my heart that when, I, I mean, we, I, I worked for about a year, believe it or not, to get ready for the 40th anniversary of this church. But I'm telling you what, my mind now is shifted, and I'm, I'm, I'm going for some new things now, and I'm seeing them in the spirit first before I'll see them in the natural. You're, go, you're, going, you're going to see it happen. And you're going to look around one day and say, Woo, look what the Lord has done. And I hope you join me. And be a source of faith to join with me. But faith begins by stretching my imagination. That's how it all starts. And I know that's what God's trying to do in the universal church of, of, of Jesus today. Number two, faith is taking the initiative. Faith is taking the initiative. In Mark chapter 5, there's a story about a woman who had been sick for 12 years. She had an issue of blood. She was a hemophiliac. She couldn't stop bleeding in her life. And if you know anything about Jewish law, you realize that this made her ceremonially unclean in Jewish culture, which meant she had no social life. She, she could not be out among the crowd. And one day she heard that Jesus Christ was coming to town, and she said, if I can but just touch his robe, I'll be healed. In other words... So she took the initiative. She made a daring act and she went out into the crowd and she pushed her way through the crowd and came up behind Jesus and touches the back of his robe and she is instantly healed. I think we all, if you know that story, we love that story. Now, a part of it I really like is Jesus recognized that someone had touched him in faith. In other words, that virtue had gone out of him. And Jesus turns around and said, who touched me? Who touched me? How many of you know faith will touch the Lord? Because now people are pressing all around him in this crowd, and this worm, woman squirms her way through the crowd, and he says, who touched me? Now, how many of you know the disciples were not always where they needed to be? They were kind of a bumbling group from time to time. They just didn't get it. Jesus had to just every now and then just tell them how he felt. How many of you know Peter was a kind of a Barney Fife of the disciples at times? And Peter goes, Lord, why do you say who touched me? Can't you see all these people around you? You've been bumping into people. They've been bumping into you. No, Jesus said, who touched me? In other words, who touched me in faith? You see, Jesus knew the difference. The woman comes to the front and she says, I did it, Lord. And he says, daughter, your faith has made you whole. In other words, she took the initiative. There are times in faith, now I want you to hear the whole context of this message before you just jump out and do something, but, but there, there's times where you've got to take the initiative. In other words, she broke the rules. I mean, you know, a lot of people will try to keep you in the rules and in all the little boundaries. But she didn't do that. She pressed ahead. She got through the crowd, and because she took the initiative, which that uh, was an act of faith that healed her, so faith is deciding to begin. You, you've got to say, okay, I'm going to begin. It's committing yourself to action. Now, there's a time to take action. There's a time to wait, but there's a time to take action. How many of you know this? Now, hold on. Faith is the antidote to procrastination. Maybe I'll get a smile over here if I say that. Don't anybody raise your hand. Don't bump if you're here with somebody. But how many of you ever have had a problem with procrastination? I said you didn't have to show your hands. Y'all are honest people. How many over here? Anybody, any over here? Wow, y'all are just y'all are just a great bunch today. How does faith overcome procrastination? How does it help me? If you've heard this term, get it in gear, <laughs> to get off dead center, to break out of the rut. And to move ahead and take the initial step that will move me to where I want to be. How do you do that? How does it help me to quit being indecisive and waffling back and forth and sitting on the fence? Have you ever sat on a fence? It's kind of rough. Some fences anyway. How can I take the initiative? Well, faith is stretching my imagination. 
And not only does it stretch my imagination, then it has to take the initiative. And number three, faith is risking a failure. Now, we don't like this. Most people do not like the possibility of risking failure. But if you're going to be a person of faith, you've got to be willing to risk a failure. Why? Because there's no faith without risk. There's no faith without risk. Faith means stepping out into the unknown. And how many of you sometimes you just don't know what's out in the unknown? The Bible says this in 2 Corinthians 5 and 7. It says, we walk by faith, not by sight. We're going to learn to do that again. We walk by faith, not by sight. Man, if I can't see it, I'm not going to believe it. I, I know people that don't come to the Lord because they say, I can't see him. You got to see all these things that we live out by faith. This means that we walk looking with spiritual eyes, not with physical eyes. We look at it from God's point of view, not from man's point of view. Now, I know that's a little bit scary. Every now and then I think when the Lord puts something on my heart, it, it can be a little scary when you think about, okay, all right. But how many of you know God doesn't call us to do anything that he's not there to help us with? But here's what faith is. Faith is letting go of your security. Faith is saying, I'm going to face my fears, I'm going to risk failure, and I'm going to take the dare. Now, you want to make sure the dare is coming from God. Right? By the way, to kind of illustrate this, have you ever, how many of you have ever gone to the circus? Y'all have been so good to respond. How many of you have ever been to the circus? A few of you, are, more and more. How many of you ever watched the trapeze artist? And watch how they do things and they swing out there. And, and then the other guy is swinging, or gal, they're swinging and and then they're doing this thing here. And then the moment of truth comes. In fact, two things go through the trapeze artist's mind when he's out there swinging. Number one, he says, if I'm going to grab on to this guy, I, 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 I've got to let go of this. How many of you know there's a moment in time when you're hanging there holding nothing from the transfer from the security of one bar to the security of the other man's hands? So two things go through this trapeze artist's mind. Number one, I've got to let go of the security to grab on to number two. And then the second thing that goes through his mind is, I don't have all day. <laughs> Folks, there is a time where you just don't have all day. Let's see. How many of you ever heard the term analysis paralysis? Sometimes God's speaking to us to do something. We sit there we analyze it from four different angles and five different dimensions and all that kind of stuff. And, and, and God's I uh, moved on to something else. I mean, you know, uh, I, I thank God I'm not one of those trapeze artists. Don't want to be one. But you don't have all day. In other words, there's no time for indecision. You've got to risk the failure. You, you've got to take the dare. You've got to jump. You, you, you've got to make the step. I think the Lord's going to be calling His people and the church to take some steps of faith. In fact, I really believe I'll be sharing with you some things we're going to step out and we're going to do in faith. It's a new season. I've been declaring that. It's a new time. God's making a roadway in the wilderness. He's bringing water in the wastelands. I hope you're believing that with me because we're about to step out and do some new things. That was the weakest amen I've had all morning. By the way, talking about this thing of, uh, of walking in faith, it reminds me of when Jesus called Peter to walk on the water. I mean, you know, Peter had to be willing to risk failure. He could have drowned. It was very real. Now, we know the story now. We've got hindsight. We realize God didn't let that happen. But, but there's an interesting point about the story, and the point is this. If you want to walk on the water, you've got to get out of the boat. Use me, Lord. All right, Lord says, release all your securities and let's, let, let, let's go. Let's, let, let's start walking on the water. Well, this crowd over here didn't receive that very well. How about this group over here? <laughs> it takes faith. Amen, it does. In other words, faith is risking a failure. 
It's making the investment of time and of money and of energy. And even you got to put your reputation on the line and, and, and whatever else it is. And so faith is risking failure. And number four, faith is expecting the best. Faith is expecting the best. The Bible says in, in Matthew 9 and 29, according to your faith it will be done unto you. It's according to our faith. Oh, I'm just waiting for God to do his thing. God's waiting on us to join him and do our thing too. How many of you know there's a, there's a, God has his part in this and we have our part? Faith is expectation. I love this phrase. Faith is positive expectation. We need some positive expectation today, right? Man, you look around, you watch a little bit of the news or get on social media, you're like, ooh, I've got negative faith going on right now. But we need some positive faith, some positive expectation. In other words, you expect God to answer. And you expect the solution to come through. You expect things to work out. I love this one. You expect to be a success. You expect that everything is going to fall into place. And it does. Now, I'm going to balance all this out in just a little bit. But, but how many of you know expectations are faith? They are. Expectations are faith. Now the fact of the matter is we tend to see what we expect to see. Yeah. We tend to see what we expect to see. We hear what we expect to hear. We act the way we act. Or we, yeah, we act the way we expect to act. We feel the way we expect to feel. Here, here's one. You've heard this before. Good morning, Lord, or good Lord, it's morning. Woo. No believer should ever wake up and say, good Lord, it's morning. We should get up and say, good morning, Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. I purposely do that every day regardless of how I feel. Good morning, Father. Thank you for this brand new day that you've given me. And I thank him even if I didn't sleep the best. Lord, thank you for a really good uh, night of rest. Last night, in the middle of the night, our electricity went off. And it, it kind of went, it did it two or three, boom, 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 boom. So I woke up. And then I'm spoiled. I had to sleep without air conditioning. Bummer. Now, some of you are better at that than I am. We used to do it as kids. But I'm kind of spoiled now. And so guess what? I didn't sleep very good last night. But you know what I did? I got up in the, this morning and I said, Good morning, Lord. Everybody look at me. I didn't say, Oh, Lord, it's morning. Folks, if you get up with that kind of a mindset, your day is not going to go well. This is the day the Lord has made, and I'm going to rejoice in it. It's a decision. I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to be happy. Amen. You see, faith is what you expect. Did you know that you can set yourself up at the beginning of the day for either failure or success? Did you know the beginning of your day can determine if you're going to have fulfillment or frustration? And, and it's all depending on our level of faith. In other words, faith is expecting the best. God wants to bless you. God wants to take care of you. But you've got to have some faith and you've got to expect the best. So faith is stretching. It's taking, it's risking, and it's expecting but sometimes the answer doesn't come immediately. How many of you know sometimes there are delays when it comes to our prayers being answered? We don't like that. We're, we're good Americans. I want it now. I mean, you know, the healing doesn't always happen right when we want it. Or the miracle doesn't occur like or when we want it. There, there can be a delay in the answer of prayer. Uh-huh. What do you do while there's a delay, while you are waiting? Well, that brings me to number five. Faith is waiting for the answer. Now, come on, I'm getting into some good stuff now. Waiting is an evidence of faith. 
And we Americans don't wait very well. I mean, give it to me now. Waiting is the evidence of faith. Psalms 40 verse 1 says, listen, listen to the psalmist. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he heard my cry, and he delivered me. Did you notice that? I waited patiently. How many of you know that's an evidence of faith when we are waiting patiently? Now, again, I only use myself as an illustration, not because I think I'm an all-star saint or I do this thing right, but I am learning when it comes to the things of God, sometimes you have to wait a lot longer than you want to wait. <clears throat> I'd love to give you some illustrations, but I, I, I don't think you want to stay here all day. How many of you know... When we wait patiently, that, that is an evidence of faith. Uh-oh. How you respond to the waiting rooms of your life are an evidence of your faith. I found walking, the walk of faith has a lot of waiting rooms. <laughs> How long can you wait? How long can you wait? You see, that is a mark of maturity. If you can wait on God, and, and, and what did Abraham do? Abraham and Sarah decided, we've waited long enough. I'm in my 90s. I'm near, you know, Sarah's getting on up there. Let's help God out. Well, they made a mess that the world is suffering from from this very day. <laughs> Won't go into that now, but listen. How, how many of you know it's a sign of maturity when we wait? How many of you know children don't wait very well? And we're not here to pick on the children or the young people, but let's face it, they don't wait very well. Uh, they've not learned the difference between no and not yet. Sometimes God is just saying not yet. If you say not yet, they think that means that it's not going to happen. Maturity is the ability to wait. Faith is waiting for the answer. And sometimes the answer is delayed. Now that's, that's the balance to faith and the faith message. Sometimes the answer is delayed. Now, one thing that I'm learning more and more is that timing is so important in the Christian life. I hope you're still listening. That in God's plan, timing is so crucial. Many times it may be the right thing, it's just the wrong time. See, you don't want to be, you really don't want to get behind God. And you don't want to get ahead of God. That happens a lot. We get ahead of God. We help him like Abraham and Sarah. But you want to be just in his timing because God's timing is perfect. Listen, it's perfect in your job. It's perfect in your marriage. It's perfect in your schooling or your education. In fact, every area of your life. How, how about those of you in the retirement years? How many of you know, how many of you know God knows what he's doing there? Timing. In other words, timing is everything for an answer to prayer, whether it's healing or whatever it is. Lord, heal me. Okay, he didn't heal me. I'm going. I'm gone. I'm going to find some relief some way. Now, I want you to look at scriptures for just a moment. How many times in scripture that the people of God had to wait? And here's the thing we don't understand. All during that time, God was preparing them. Now, folks, I want to tell you, oh, have I ever, uh, do I have some insight on this? Mm. Let God prepare you. Because when you get the promotion, you step into the new job, the new situation. Let me tell you, you want to be prepared so you can enjoy it. Oh, I won't get on that apple box. I want you to think about the children of Israel in Egypt. This may be depressing to some of you. It's not meant to be. How long did they wait for a deliverer, to, a deliverer to set them free from their slavery? Well, the answer is 400 years. That's a long time in anybody's book. And then think about this. Even when Moses, the deliverer, came on the scene, they had to wait another 80 years. 40 years for him to grow up in Pharaoh's palace, and then another 40 years for him to go to the backside of the desert to be trained. It's giving you goosebumps, isn't it? Moses comes back at 80 years of age and finally decides to lead them out. Here's the point. God's timing is perfect. 
I almost feel like I need to shout that out real loud. Oh, I, just let, let, I'll just vent one time. Oh, we just, we, we're, we're so good at helping God out. And then when we help God out, you will pray for me, the devil is, all, oh, the devil is getting me a day of praise. Well, you got out ahead of God. And you're out in a territory where God hadn't moved you out into yet. How I many of you realize in this faith there's a little more to it than just trusting God? Number six, faith is following the instructions. Now let's look at uh, Hebrews 11 and 8. Uh, this is a beautiful story or a statement about Abraham. And in Hebrews chapter 11, you know that that's really talking about God's hall of fame. He mentions the people who were really the men and women of faith throughout history. And in verse 8, he, he's talking about Abraham. I hope you catch this. Now, <clears throat> look what he says here in Hebrews 11 and 8. By the way, faith is following the instructions, even when they don't make sense, even when they don't seem logical or rational, and you don't understand them, it is following the instructions obediently says this, by faith Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, what does it say? He obeyed and he went. Even though he did not know where he was going. How many of you know that's faith? I didn't think too much about it, but years ago, when God called Trace and I to pastor our first church in Gatesville, Texas, I had spent years building a business. And so here comes this opportunity, and now I'm getting calls from all these people I have yearned to do their work because they paid good and their product was good, and I wanted to work for them. And now I'm having to say, uh, no, I can't come. I'm going to be a preacher. What? Now, most of them knew that I was called to be a preacher, but... We had to step out and trust God, and we gave up our business to do that. Again, I'm only sharing that with you just a, as an example. But how many of you know this whole chapter is about faith? Now, Abraham obeyed, and he went. And even though he didn't know where he was going, how many of you know that's faith? That's faith. Now, can, can you imagine this? Here, here's the scenario. God comes to Abraham one day at, at the office, and Taps him on the shoulder and says, Abraham, we're moving. Abraham says, great, fantastic, where are we going? Well, you don't need to know. Abraham, how, how soon will we leave? God, right now? Abraham, well, what's it going to be like there? God, milk and honey? Great. I mean, you know, that's not a real descriptive answer. How do I know when I get there? God, I'll tell you. Abraham, how long is it going to take? God, don't worry. Okay. Abraham goes home and he says, Honey, we're moving. Let's get packed. How many of you would just get goosebumps about that? How many of you ladies would just say, A what? Get packed. How many of you know that took faith? It says... Abraham, when called to a place he'd later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he didn't know where he was going. In other words, faith is obedience. It's following the instructions. And I'm skipping a little bit there, guys. Faith is following the instructions. Faith is obeying and trusting when you do not understand. Here's what Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 says. It says, trust in the Lord and don't lean to your own understanding. You've got to follow the instructions, folks. God gives us instructions, but you've got to follow them. And number seven, faith is being persistent. This is, this is a big aspect of faith. In other words, faith is keeping on and keeping on. Faith never gives up. Faith is continuing to persevere. The fact is, people of faith simply don't know how to quit. I mean, the Bible says the righteous get knocked down seven times. They get up every time, right? They never give up. They keep on keeping on. You know why? Because they've got resurrection life in them. The Holy Spirit's in them. 
They keep at it. They stay at it inch by inch. They work at it. Now, we have a saying here in Quitman. By the way, I don't lack just a great deal more. But I think some of the things I'm going to say here are very important. But we have a saying here at Church on the Rock, and it goes this way. We don't quit in Quitman. We don't quit in Quitman. We don't quit. And you say, well, I'm from Mineola. What do we do? Well, you're here right now. So just, just analogize it. <laughs> I mean, you know, sometimes you're waiting, and that's passive. But sometimes you're being persistent, and that's active. You're working, and you're striving, and you're continuing. But you don't give up even for a moment. Even though you don't see the answer. What do you do when it comes to the practical things of life? You keep working at them. For example, you keep working at your marriage. You keep working at your job. You, you keep believing God that there's going to be a breakthrough. In other words, people of faith, don't give up. Can I hear an amen? amen. Have you thought about Noah lately? Noah is an amazing man. God said, you're going to build an ark and it, it's going to flood from the rain. The amazing thing about this is the Bible says up to that point it had never rained. Now, I don't know if you know this or not, but there was a mist that, mist that came up from the ground and watered the earth, and, and that's why they had never seen a rainbow before. It had never rained. So when a rainbow comes out, how many of you go, wow, I, I love rainbows, they're beautiful. And oh, you see them on social media a lot, and everybody, I, I love them. But, it, but it, they didn't have that before it rained. But after it started raining, God gave the rainbow as a promise that he'd never destroy the earth again by flood. So nobody knew what rain was then. So here's Noah out there building an ark in the middle of the desert. He's out right in the middle of it, having no idea how God's going to get water to it. By the way, do you know how long it took Noah to build the ark? 120 years. Everybody's coming out and saying, Oh, no, this guy is a crackpot. He's out there building, literally, the Bible says they did that. They made fun of him. He's building this big ship in the middle of the Sahara Desert. But you know what Noah did? Or, or, yeah, Noah, he persevered. And he persisted. Galatians says this. Let us not be weary in well-doing. We are going to reap the harvest if we do not faint. And there is the key. If we don't give up, if we don't give in, faith is being persistent. And then finally, number eight. Now I want you to listen to this one. Faith is rebounding from failure. Faith is rebounding from failure. I want us to look at uh, Isaiah chapter 43, and this is a beautiful verse. We've been talking about this verse for about a month or a month and a half here, but I want to put a little different a twist on it today. Isaiah 43 really is about faith rebounding from failure. Any of you ever had any failures in your life? Let, let me see your hand. Everyone in this room should be raising their hand. We've all had them. Because the fact is everybody fails in life. Nobody's perfect. We all make mistakes. A successful person is not a person who's never failed. A successful person is a person who got up from the failure and they went on. In other words, they continued. They didn't let it get them down. Listen very carefully now. Failure is never final unless you let it be final. Faith or failure is never final unless you let it be final. Isaiah 43, verse 18. This is the verse that precedes the verse we've been reading. Verse 18, God says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Wow. I mean, you know, that, that's a now word for all of us. Forget the former things. Don't dwell on the past. And by the way, let me just say regarding this church's 40th anniversary, we wanted to celebrate it, we wanted to mark it. But let me tell you, one thing, uh, as long as I'm here, we're not going to sit here and say, Boy, 
was the good old days. Oh, man, I tell you, it was the good old days. You remember when? No, these are the good old days. Now, I'm telling you, that's my heart. Ooh. There's nothing wrong with looking back and saying, look what all God did. God did some wonderful things. A lot of people saved, marriages saved. I mean, all kinds of miracles have happened. But, folks, listen, God's not in the past. God's in the future. And so he says, don't dwell on the past. And then verse 19, which you're more familiar with, he says, see, I'm doing a new thing. See, if you're looking in the rearview mirror, how many of you know you can't see what's coming before you? And if you're always looking in the rearview mirror, guess what? Smack, you're going to have a wreck. You're going to have a wreck if you're always looking in the rear view mirror. God says, I'm doing a new thing. How many of you know God is the God of newness? Here's what he said, now it will spring forth. Do you not perceive it? He said, I'm making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. In other words, God says, I'm going to bring productivity where there has been barrenness. I'm not going to ask any of you if you've ever gone through a season of barrenness. You know, maybe you feel barren right now. But I'm telling you, if you'll hear what I'm saying, God's about to give you a new season. A season of growth, of productivity, of, of, of good things. Amen. In other words, God says, I'm going to bring success where there has been failure. And I'm going to bring fulfillment where there has been frustration. Anybody ever been frustrated? I'm going to bring water in the middle of the desert. Listen to this. I'm going to take a useless life and turn it into a useful life. Here's what he says. Forget the past. Don't dwell on it. I'm going to do a new thing. In other words, we're going to rebound from failure. If you like that, say amen. Now... Some of you are still reacting to a past crisis, a divorce, a bankruptcy, a major embarrassment, a problem in your past that maybe you're ashamed of. Let me tell you something I've learned about faith. Faith refuses to have a pity party. Faith says, I'll not look at the past. Faith says, I will go ahead. I'll look at the future. I will see what God wants to do in my life. I will see what I can become, not what I've been. How many of you, how many of you are ready to move on from what you've been? Or, or what you are right now. I, I, I am. I'm ready to move on. Thank God for the past. How many of you know what you focus on, you move toward? Faith looks ahead. Amen. Come on, everybody. Let, let's practice this. Okay, I, I, I think I'm probably going to, this is probably not a smart thing to do, but it, what team is it they do this? It's the, uh, the Braves. Is it the Braves? Okay, I knew I should have not even done that. But here's what we're going to do. How many, of you, how many of you are ready to go forward? I should have forgot that other thing. Back that up, get rid of that. Come on, everybody, let's practice. We're going forward, right? We're going forward in Jesus' name. How I many of you know the faith life starts with simple honesty saying, God, I don't have much faith. I really don't. One time a man came to Jesus and said, Lord, I, I want to believe. And he said, please help me to overcome my unbelief. Some of you need to say that this morning. You need to say, God, I don't know if I believe or not. You need to be honest with God, but, but you need to tell him, I want to believe. Lord, would you please help me to overcome my unbelief? That, that's what the man was saying to Jesus. Help me with my unbelief. I think there's some of you have been thinking about becoming a Christian for weeks or months or even years. And some of you are saying today, Steve, I want you to come and just begin to play. Some of you today are saying, David, I want to believe. I want to take 
the first step in the Christian life this morning. And I want to be a believer in Jesus Christ. And you're saying, as much as I know how, I want to make that commitment to Him today. And here's what we're going to do. Let's all stand as we are able this morning. And I'm going to pray right now, and uh, I'm going to invite you to follow me. And I'm going to encourage you to pray this prayer out loud. But if, but if praying out loud just really makes you nervous, then don't worry about it. But let's all just pray along. Just, just pray in your heart. And, and how many of you know God will hear you this morning? How many of you know God knows what we're thinking right now, every one of us? Just say this. God, I want to believe in you. Come on, say that if you can out loud with me. God, I want to believe in you. Lord, would you help me with my unbelief? Just say this. Say it in your heart if you're not comfortable. Saying it out. Say, Jesus Christ, as much as I know how, I want to commit myself to you. Please help me to understand it more. Go ahead, say that in your heart. Say that out loud. You know, you may be a Catholic, you may be a Protestant, a Jew. You know, it really doesn't matter what your background is. What we're talking about is a relationship with Jesus Christ. And you'd say, Jesus Christ, would you increase my faith and help me to grow? Say it to him. Tell him, I want to take the first step this morning. And I open my life up to you to do what you want to do in my life. In Jesus' name. Now let me just say, first of all, if you prayed that prayer. First of all, it's kind of a recommitment to the Lord. God bless you. If you prayed for the very first time to invite Jesus into your heart, here's first of all what I want to encourage you to do. I want to encourage you to pick up one of our little next step booklets that are in the foyer. You can find them at the foyers. In fact, we're going to have people right here at the front of the church afterwards. They can give you one. And I'm going to encourage you to do that because this little booklet tells you how to start taking the next step. By the way, if you have questions... Hey, I'm always available. I am never too busy. Some people say, well, I was going to ask you about faith and about walking with the Lord, but you look busy. I'm never too busy to talk to someone about faith. Ever, ever too busy to do that. And so I want to encourage you to do that. Uh, and Like I said, there will be people here at the front. In fact, I'm going to ask those of you who are going to be here just to go ahead and step up right now. And uh, also... I want you to visit our resource table. There's all kinds of great products there on how you can start growing in your walk with the Lord. We've got New Believer Bibles. We've got Fresh Start Bibles. We've, we've got all kinds of good material there that will help you. Or you can go online to COTR Equipment. That stands for Church on the Rock Equipment at AOL.com. And you can go to the Meet God tab. There's all kinds of great resources there that will help you out. How many of you are ready to be a person of faith this morning and say, Lord, increase my faith? I want you to pray that prayer this week. Say, God, I'm going to go with you, and God, I'm going to follow you. I'm going to do what you tell me to do, and you're going to increase my faith. Lord, do that in all of us today, we pray in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Let me just encourage you before you leave. Uh, go to the uh, for your area and, and check out our Connect group board and see if we can help you find a group there for you and your family. The, these are kicking off this week and, and find a time and a location that fits you. And uh, I think it'll be worth your effort. Amen. Well, all right, everybody. want to thank you so much for coming today. And y'all have a great week, great groups, and we will see you next time. God bless, everybody.